So thanks everyone for uh, making the time to this quick class induction. Um, as uh, for those of you who saw my session on Tuesday, it was pretty fast paced and also furious. Um, so, but that's only the tip of the iceberg that we actually handle at Light U Docs. Uh, but what I wanna do is you've got, so all of you have got a 30 day um, a free use trial. Um, so after this session, uh, for everyone who's registered, we'll be sending you an email with your login details, which will obviously be your email address, um, password, and then you'll be able to make your own password. And then what we'll do is we'll put a $2,000 credit to your account. Um, so you're coming in what we call an LY basic user, which is just simply a one-off document um, user. But we'll go through a whole lot of that a little bit later on. I'll give you a few hacks, a few strategies, I'll send this webinar um, out for you a bit later on and so that way you're going to get full use of it. If you use more than $2,000, look, I honestly don't really care. Um, it's there for you. So the more you use it, the, the happier that I'll be um, because you will see that it's very, very special. It's taken us um, I mean, two years to build and really, in fact, it's probably about 10 years in the making in my mind. Um, and cost us more than uh, one and a half million dollars to build. So it's a, it's a pretty flash system and uh, more than happy to go through um, uh, that. So let's, uh, let's move along. Uh, and uh, for those of you, just a, a one thing now, because you will be like Docs users, uh, we've got our SMSF Strategies and Estate Planning Roadshow uh, coming up in October. I think it's the 15th in Adelaide, 18th in uh, Perth, 21st is Melbourne, 23rd is Sydney, 25th is Brisbane, and 28th is Gold Coast. I can't remember I remember that. Uh, but you'll find that um, if you like that strategy session I did at class the other day, I'll actually be spending a whole six hours uh, going into case studies, which to me is the only way to learn. I mean, many of you, um, you've seen the talking heads that were at class. You don't really learn much being lectured at or go to panels. So this is deep dives into case studies with more than 20 strategies. Normally the price is 245, but because you are like your docs users or registered users now, um, I'll show you where to go later just for $145. So make sure you bring along all of your team, your staff and the main principals. Um, as always, if there's any issues, uh, please just contact us at 1300 168 380. Uh, but let's move on. So. Uh, from our perspective, what is Lightyear Docs? Um, many of you have used probably different platforms such as ClearDocs or now Infinity um, or Smart Super or whatever. We're a little bit different. Um, it's effectively it's an advanced document creation platform uh, that uses HotDocs legal document. Um, it's an engine. So with that, um, we spent that's where we spent most of our money um, using their system and uh, building an overlay on top of that. Uh, it's uh, been advantageous, for example, if we have a look at my old firm now, Infinity, which has 38 developers over in Ukraine um, developing their system. Uh, we've got a pre-built system that is really being used by more than one million legal firms around the world. Uh, we like to say that um, the, the, the system we're building is like having a legal office, well, actually a very, very efficient uh, legal office in your practice. Um, the beauty about it is that, you know, we can deliver tax, legal, super and SMC documents uh, to accountants um, and also planners and, and uh, other industries. Uh, the best thing about it is because of the, the way the system is, uh, we've got a team of developers, well, basically three of them, uh, who essentially can put documents up really quickly up onto the platform. The other day I did, an, uh, which is quite a complex one, an uh, enduring power of attorney, which is going to be rolled out in our roadshow along with our whole estate planning suite. Um, I got that from uh, New South Wales um, and that was a very complex document which would normally take, um, if I was at say uh, now Infinity from my experience, it would take six weeks to put up but we ended up having it up there within three hours which is also useful for a number of our users and we've got over 200 Lightyear Docs users. Uh, they do send us uh, documents that they would like to see up on the system. For example, uh, recently we're going to be producing a number of indemnity um, agreements. Uh, one was uh, from one of our firms over in Adelaide, uh, Johnson Grokey, who have done extremely well and one of our uh, licensees have taken a license for the platform um, and uh, they had one of their directors leaving their business 
um, and they wanted to get an indemnity from that director that they will not sue the firm. Anyway, there's a, a lot of those things. We build the, the we build the document, it's so it's a sharing caring community, and then we put it up there for you. Um, as uh, if I were the second one, I'll just uh, annotate because I'll, I'll come through so you can follow the bouncing ball, I like it. Uh, it's used by one million legal firms around the world, so its its core focus is accuracy, speed, and most of all compliance, as you could expect if it's basically a legal uh, document engine. Um, and generates, not obviously from us, but we can if we wanted to, general rates around the world, 10 million documents per hour. So the good thing about it from our perspective is it's in immensely scalable, which means it allows us to um, provide, and I'll show you the document list, discretionary trust companies, unit trusts, SMSF pensions, estate planning, much more. And the maximum is the $99 uh, per document. Um, alternatively, we have, uh, have some unlimited document uh, options as well. So, um, but we're really taking it one step further. So I think there's plenty of document document providers out there. Uh, but what what you'll get, and hopefully you'll get by the end of your 30 days, and I'll show you where I want to take you, is that uh, many of our strategies um, that I've developed over time, and you can see we sort of started on when I was a class, but I'll elaborate a lot more of that that roadshow. So from um, uh, myself and also our in-house legal team, which is at TGA Legal, who sign off on all the documents. Um, and if you need a copy of the letter um, showing that you don't breach legal professional privilege, feel free to come to us at any time over that period of time. But a lot of the strategies we do is more than one document or uh, one, you know, an integration. So, uh, for example, a related party LRBA for SMSFs for property or shares consists of nine different documents, including trustee meetings, setting up holding trusts, doing a related party loan, looking at the commissioner's PCG 2016-5, which deals with them doing mortgage deeds, um, and if you want, putting a personal guarantee. So a lot of that stuff, if you went normally to a legal firm and said, well, this is what I'd like to uh, put in place, you'd be looking at maybe you know, two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 to do that, um, and it'd probably take weeks, um, and you'd be forever going backwards and forwards, and it would be an extremely frustrating process. Um, you'll be able to do it on our site for, it takes you no more than five or 10 minutes. Um, and uh, the cost there for that complex documents, those nine documents is is $450. So that's that's half price of the, the $99 that would normally be a document. Um, if you're on an unlimited document uh, package, um, which is basically $575 a month, then you can you know do as many as you want. Um, our next big rollout is in October. Um, and that consists of estate planning and succession on death for all entities. So we'll be looking at uh, succession planning for family trusts, bucket companies, um, SMSFs, by way of pensions, uh, accumulation, and also we've got a new thing called an SMSF testamentary trust that comes out of the SMSF deed rather than the uh, will. Then we'll also be looking at wills and testamentary and super proceeds trusts. So you'll actually be built all of that, but again, you're gonna be saving 90% of the time and you won't need to go to lawyers for that. Uh, there will be a requisite sign-off just for the wills and testamentary trusts uh, side, but that will go to our TGA Legal, um, and that's four ninety five dollars for sign-off in relation to that. So, again, it's going to be a great deal, and we're starting to pump those out. But I don't want to jump ahead of ourselves. Let's just keep things um, pretty simple. Um, in terms of class, uh, where we're going is... Um, uh, we've uh, effectively, uh, with class, uh, we've just integrated with uh, BGL CAS 360. Um, so that's coming up next week. Class will be completing in early November, so just after the roadshow. Um, so that's going to actually make, um, you're going to see how quick our system is anyway, but um, it'll make strategy and document automation even easier. So you'll be able to complete the documents um, to be able to start, for example, a company on our platform and then uh, all that information can then go into class. Um, all the reverse way, if you're going to do a pinch, you're about to pull data out of uh, class itself. But um, where we're going with this is you're going to see a new future um, uh, where we'd like to go, and we will pilot this over the next six months to 12 months, where uh, some of you will put your hands up and say, look, you know, we'd like to work a lot closely with you. And then you'll give us authorization of um, access to data in class, which effectively what integrations do. But 
All we'll be looking is for specific events. For example, uh, when someone turns age 58 now on their birthday, that will actually be in the class um, system. What we'll be able to do is, um, if it's in your database and someone's 58th birthday, uh, what we'll do is uh, we will be able to pull that data out as an event. Um, and then what we will do is then uh, wrap around some client com communications about the benefits of uh, starting and, and commencing a transition or retirement income stream um, with all the relevant uh, documentation there, which will be automatically prepared. So we're sort of moving into this artificial intelligence environment and suddenly it'll pop up on your desktop. Um, you get a notification from us and class as well uh, that this strategy is being pre-prepared uh, for your client. Um, and then obviously you can just uh, send out, we'll, we'll come out with client communications around the benefits of doing a TRIS, et cetera, which might include a video, uh, so on. Um, and then you'll hold a pre-prepared strategy. You'll send it out to the client. Uh, two things there, if you've seen the investment strategy, a video that I've done yesterday, you'll say this is the transition, these are all the benefits, this is the cost of implementing it for you. Or alternatively, um, assign an indemnity there uh, that we have given you a strategy and that uh, obviously there's no uh, no reverse side for that. Um, if if we go, uh, look, I honestly think that in accountants that I think the licensing regime will drop off. But for those of you who do have a license, um, it'll also come if you need be with a statement of advice, which is coming out very shortly as well. Now, how easy is that when you actually got the strategies, client comms and everything is produced uh, for you? So that's essentially where we're going. So what I want to do now is we're going to walk you through the system. I'm going to show you a bit. Um, I've got uh, Michael Jeffries, who's uh, a director and really is the uh, company specialist. We'll, we'll take you through a couple of company issues there, uh, whether you want to set up a, um, a sole purpose trustee company for an SMSF or just an ordinary company. Um, as I said before, you're going to get a uh, $2,000 credit for uh, use over the next 30 days. If you need more, just simply come back to us. Uh, given the investment strategy, oops, sorry, given the investment strategy stuff um, that we looked at yesterday, I'd probably think that um, uh, spending some time on getting client investment strategies, seeing it's not going to cost you anything, you know, get them out and get them up and running uh, for your clients would be a great uh, opportunity. If you didn't get that, I'm happy to just contact us at support at lightyearedocs.com.au um, and you can access that video. In fact, I think it's up on our support centre. So try it as much as you want. Importantly, if, you, if you're if you getting a bit lost, I know my mate Stephen, uh, we're going through Div 7A and all that. Um, I know if you're getting lost and you want to do a one-on-one -on -one induction after this, so you want to really get in-depth and have a look under the hood, you know, please feel free again to contact us at uh, support at lightyearedocs.com.au and uh, what I will do from there is, uh, what we'll do is we'll book in a time and you can basically um, have a chat with our people. Um, so um, there's the only fees you're going to pay over the period are obviously ASIC fees. Um, uh, with those, if you pay a credit card, we're very generous. I don't even know why we're doing this, but Michael's complained, but we said we would. We even absorbed the merchant fees there. So um, I think that that's uh, uh, pretty uh, good. Um, Laura said the pricing um, slide. So um, as I said before, um, da, 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 da. so the pricing there is uh, maximum $99 per doc. That's what we call our LY basic. Um, Lightyear firm. So if you just wanted unlimited documents, one firm account, it's $595 per month. And that's absolutely unlimited. So you can use all our estate planning unit trust, our strategy automation, everything, and the maximum you'll pay on a monthly basis is five ninety five. Now there's no locking contracts, uh, Laura. Um, you simply pay five ninety five if you want to jump out in three months' time, so on and so forth. Um, our bottom one always strategist, um, that is where you uh, wrap up because I know you've all done SMSFs, but I produce um, around about three or four hours of uh, CPD specialist SMSF CPD a month. Uh, which uh, meets the FASIA requirements, etc. cetera. Um, so that's a firm-wide. So for an extra $200 a month, you get technical support from me, plus um, obviously uh, unlimited CPD across the firm. So that's not a bad one. Um, one other thing that I didn't want to go into um, on the, at these uh, class strategy day 
is uh, another way of doing it is, um, in fact, is setting up a special purpose unit trust, uh, which holds a license from us. So if you think of this, uh, what happens is we give you the whole platform license. Um, you need to have at least two partners um, or as long as one of the partners, it doesn't really work for single member firms, but if there's two partners or you've got two accountants joining together, um, you go 50-50 in the process um, and then effectively what will happen is that is now held by the SMSFs. If you're just doing a family trust and you want to do the trust, you can hold the licence in the family trust if you want. It doesn't make any difference. The main thing there is, though, the, the trust or the unit trust will then charge your practice for the documents and the strategies. So it's a way of siphoning money out of the practice into your unit trust and then into the SMSFs. Um, and if there's, for example, two partners, uh, the cost of the first year is 6950 So that's only a $3,500 investment each. If there's three, it's only like 2200 If there's four, it's only about 1800 And then what happens is that, that you'll find that that will generate quite a significant amount of income into the unit trust. But if you want to know more about that, you know, please feel free to just contact me at grant at ilovesmsf.com um, or michael at ilovesmsf.com. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's move out and have a look at um, the uh, platform. So this is uh, the Lightyear Docs. I've got demo. So LY Strategist, so that is the $7.95 a month or our licensee, which means it's just unlimited docs. So I can go through all of those. So when I have a look there, I've got the home button. Um, underneath the home button, I've obviously got our packages, which you can go and have a look at any point in time. So it's lightyeardocs.com.au. Um, we can um, download your decision tool, which is effectively see compared to what pricing you've got now, but we'll always beat it anyway. Uh, we've got our full document listing there. So uh, we've currently got 50 documents. We're putting more than two or three up each week. Um, now, we've got our strategy automation, which we can have a look at the category there. So we've got a related party uh, property meeting ATO guidelines, which is the one I talked about. That's, you know, the 10 documents. A leading member kit. Um, I won't go into that. That's that's a family protection SMSF, um, but we'll look at that um, at the roadshow. So make sure we come along with that. Uh, LRBA with shares is 450 corporate trustee and deed upgrade to Lightyear Docs. So we'll have a look at that uh, very shortly. So that's only $129. Uh, that's to upgrade your current um, and existing uh, deed and corporate trustee. So I'll have a look at that very shortly. So that's our strategy automation. Anything that's got more than two documents we or in, integrations we put there. Um, so I can go through and there's a whole lot of other uh, product categories I've got. You've got loan agreements, NDAs, um, employment agreements, partnerships. Uh, you've got all your income streams, your TRIS. I've got leading member, reversion pensions, order reversion pensions, account-based pensions, which I might look, have a look at. Um, all your company stuff sitting there. All your estate planning, which is um, we've already got a binding death benefit directions, um, and that will go out further. We've got lots of um, SMSF borrowing stuff there. So you can see your LRBA holding trust pack for banks. And that's gone through Liberty and Latrobe. Um, Non-bank lending, so that's if you just want to do a straight related party loan or, as for example, a credit union. And a promissory note. So a promissory note is equivalent to um, a contribution uh, that we've got there. Uh, so we've got um, uh, down a little bit further. Uh, we've got employment and HR and also advice documents, which will be coming through. And of course, we've got all our uh, trust basically sitting there. We've got a leading member discretionary trust, change of trustee for discretionary trust if you want to add beneficiaries. Uh, discretionary trust distribution minutes, 49. As you can see, there's nothing above uh, $99 unless it's obviously a multi-document facility. Your standard discretionary trust there. A superannuation unrelated investment trust, as I said, that would be um, in use as long as no one has more than 50% uh, of the underlying assets. That's what you would buy your license in and we've found that extremely popular uh, in addition to designated beneficiaries. So uh, we've effectively got all of those there. So what I'll do is I'll just go through a couple of the elements um, that we have. Um, when you have um, here, if you click on your account, um, you'll have your My In Progress Docs. So as you go through and do a document, you save on the way through um, and then effectively just hold that. 
your vault um, effectively uh, provides, these are all our uh, vaults. So when you do a client, so if we go down, for example, and have a look at the Abbott family, where are they? There you go, the Abbott family. So these are all the documents I've done. You click on that. Um, so when I do do a document, um, it will pop up here. So you can see there um, that I've done a change of trustee for discretionary trusts, of discretionary, all purposes, loan, mortgage deeds, personal guarantee, Div 7A loan agreement. I'll do that one too for um, uh, Stephen's purposes. Related party, LRBA, meaning uh, ATO, uh, discretionary trust, commercial property lease we've got up there, which is uh, extremely uh, popular. Um, and again, these are all signed off by um, a TGA Legal, so you can do it. The SMSF investment strategy for the fund that we did yesterday. Contributions, a deed of gift for unpaid present entitlements. Uh, SMSF investment strategy for the fund, which again was a, a pretty popular one there yesterday. So uh, we've got a whole lot there um, in our support centre. Oh, sorry, the vault, you can go back at any point in time. And uh, if you open it here, so you can either um, change the name or you click on the plus. So this sends, says when you do the investment strategy. It's in a PDF. It gives you a document reference number. also says when it was done and it's received. So you can either delete that, download it, or you can open it up again. So if I wanted to open it up again, it goes into my hot docs engine. Can you see all that one? And that will then open uh, that system up. And uh, what I've done is I've relaunched my whole system there. So you can see with that investment strategy at any point in time, I think I've got 30 days to go and change that uh, document if I want. Because sometimes, you know, when you go through it, clients uh, obviously give you the wrong information, you get wrong data, etc. Uh, particularly when you're having a look at benchmarks, etc. So, for example, remember we had a look at a property strategy yesterday. We said that, you know, we've got domestic property of 40 to 90% residential and industrial, and we gave some benchmarks around that. Um, you know, we might end up changing that because they haven't got any industrial property. So we take, we would just simply take that off, um, and then we might change that from zero to 90, um, or probably more importantly, probably. Um, because we're always going to keep one property, 49%, 40 to 90%. Um, and then if I then wanted to finish, uh, update it, and then what will happen is it goes into the system again um, and then generates a brand new document. So it's very easy to use. Um, the only problem we'll have is usually it's, my fingers are very slow, but I have seen a uh, one of our members uh, effectively has um, gone ahead and um, updated uh, like 60 or 70 uh, deeds at the time. So you can see there, there's the download um, there. So it's now updated the document. But again, that will now go into your vault. Um, so if I go back into my vault and I'll have a look and we go back to the Abbott family. Oops, sorry. So I go back in there. I'll go back to my last investment strategy and up will pop. I've now done two documents there. So you can see um, as a consequence of that. If you go back and um, uh, relaunch it, there's no extra cost for making those changes, which is crucial. Uh, what's pretty important for you as we go down the track is our support centre. Um, so you've got the, the document suite there if you want. Um, that just simply goes through. These are all the documents we've got. In fact, there's probably about another 30 documents uh, for that we need to effectively go back into. In the media, um, client documents and advice toolkits. Um, letting a member advice toolkit, um, don't worry about that, but um, certainly the people who are using it uh, charging three to $4,000 plus uh, to upgrade client deeds to leading member. Effectively, it's like, a, it's like what we call it the Royale SMSF, uh, because what we do is we put in place a leading member in the SMSF. Um, and then that person effectively controls that uh, whole fund and has complete veto power um, over all decision making. And then obviously it builds in succession because when they that dies and passes on to the next person. But what we'll do is we'll come around to that one um, at the October Roadshow. Um, if you want to do a client deed upgrade um, letter, um, you can just download that. That's in a document format. And I'll take you through the upgrade very shortly. Investment strategy review and recommendation letter. I went through that. I also built this trustee questionnaire 
uh, that you might want to send. I know we had a bit of a, a feedback yesterday is um, how do we get our clients involved in this process? So you just download the document and you can see here, pops up in Word. Um, you can see this is an old thing. So this is something you send out to your client. Um, so it goes through, talks about the commissioner's uh, guidelines, what he wants, complete the following table. The purpose of the table is to develop your fund's investment strategy as required under the super law. So if you're not a financial planner, you're just accountant, it's best to actually just send this out to them and they can read through it and then they can do their benchmark allocation and then there's a percentage there. And when they when that comes back, um, then you just simply have to complete that or get one of your administrative staff to complete that investment strategy. So that's a way of getting around any perceived concerns about the licensing rules. But you'll simply find that um, at your um, in the support centre. Um, the other one that's client documents and advice toolkits. The other one that um, is pretty popular is like this video. Um, I'll, I won't keep this in here, but we've got a whole lot of document training videos, discretionary trust minutes, promissory notes, pension commutation, trist fallback. There's a whole lot there. Then we've got strategy webinars. So these are documents, and then for example, deed of gift, uh, which is for UPE, which I would suggest you probably want to have a look at. The investment strategy one I did yesterday, my top five contribution strategies, binding death benefits directions, commercial lease, leading member suites, um, and then we've got some platform webinars. So if you want to do a full platform walkthrough, et cetera. But you won't really need to know that because we're just uh, going through this here and I'll send you this uh, recorded um, element. So uh, any questions so far before I, that, that's a bit of a walk around. I'll actually start going into the documents there. So. What I want to do is um, I will go into, I think that just takes me into, so that's a support centre, which is off-site. So I'll go back to Lightyear Docs. Um, and what I'll do is I will just go home. I'll go into the strategy automation. And what I'm going to do is a corporate trustee and deed upgrade to Lightyear Docs. So when you go here, um, when you, because I want an unlimited, um, I can just start the document. I can do as many as I want. Um, you'll find here about the product, uh, why it's different, what the documents are, so on and so forth. Uh, general information, uh, what's included, how long it takes, the cost, etc. Who's signed off? Uh, the benefits. Uh, look, there's heaps of strategies, etc and FAQs in terms of legal. So that's all there. And of course, you can come back to us any point in time. Um, that's one of the differences that we've found certainly from us compared to others is that you get a lot of tech support either from myself or from Michael, or one of our team. So it's high level tech support there. Um, uh, we've got, uh, okay, we've got uh, one question there that was already answered. So thanks very much for that, uh, Michael. Uh, Wendy Lenoble. Um, to grant, do I need to register on the site to have access during the trial period as I cannot see how to access the documents and also the webinars? Yeah, no, what's going to happen, Wendy, um, is, good question, is that um, after this session, what we will do is we will send you your registration and that will then have a $2,000 credit to it. So if we take that, that way we can put the credit in rather than you registering and going forward. So once you do that, you'll get obviously all the support center and, and do as many documents as you want. Um, so let's go through and have a look here. So I'm gonna start the document. Um, I'm gonna put it into the Abbott family. Now, one thing that I learned yesterday is you it won't come up until, you can see there that it's white, but once it goes green, that's when I can start. So it's a bit, uh, well, again, it's not temperamental, it's just very compliance oriented. You've got to make sure. So this uh, now takes us in. You can see this at overlay. Now we're going into our hot docs, which is the, the legal platform. Um, and that is now um, just pumping along. So it'll come, all, come along the way. So, um, so what I've got, I've got here on the left hand side the interview outline. So um, all of these things are basically called interviews. Company details, the meeting, SMSF fund details, data variation, and also the signer. So what it does is this is looking at upgrading both the, if you do have an already existing special purpose uh, company, then you put here, so you just put, for example, SMSF nominees, 
Um, this will be a lot easier, of course, uh, once we get integration with class, because this will be pre-populated. But at this present point in time, as you can see, it's not like a, it's a, a huge issue, um, unless you've got big fat fingers like me. As I said, um, I've seen someone do um, 80 of these D upgrades for their firm in one day. Now, mind you, she was uh, obviously a very good um, administrator. So two directors, um, all I need to do is, if you can see there, is I put in two, but I could put in four or whatever, and then I confirm. And so then that pops up the details here of the directors. So I can put in um, my two directors, John Smith, um, and then I tab, and then I can put in Judy Smith. If I'm going too fast, just let me know because I'm, I'm happy to, to slow down at any point in time. After this, I'll, I'll get Michael to take you through companies. So uh, will the director sign on behalf? Absolutely. So then I just go to next, and you can see this little bottom red line tells you how far along your interview. As I said before, it's not a bad idea. See on the left, up that button here, um, save the answers as you go through, because you might, that the problem about this is because it's a legal system and it's fully compliance oriented, um, if you leave it or jump on the phone for like, I think it's about four or five minute, minutes at times out, and that's mainly because in legal firms, the last thing you want is it to be left open and someone coming and changing um, the details or the data. So that's the first thing. So I've, I've set up the company. Now, in order to um, change the constitution uh, under Section 137 of, actually 136, of the Corporations Act, we need the members or the shareholders. So um, they have to sign off. So if they do, then we update the um, we update the corporate trustee, corporate trustee. Put in the chairperson's full name, so that's John Smith. Um, at each trustee meeting, um, so what we're doing is we're now making a choice under the uh, corporate trustee. Do you want um, every member to have a vote, sorry, every director have a vote with the chairman a casting vote, or do you want proportional uh, votes according to your account balance? So let's go to the proportional votes. Um, that will pop up. Now, so now we've done the corporate trustee. Now we're going into the SMSF. So we go again, the Smith family SMSF. Work out what state um, the legislation is going to apply. Mainly what it is. I mean, it's common legislation, but still, you know, New South Wales or whatever has uh, aspects. Any of the delay below that you're actually going to do the variation. Um, you can leave that blank if you don't know what it is, but let's say that, you know, we're looking at the 19th. What date was the fund originally set up? So to do that, you just need to have a look at the last deed. Um, and the last deed, it'll be that date, or you can look at um, the last deed if it's a variation. So it'll have in there when the first deed was set up and you'll go through a number. So let's say it was set up on the 1st of the 7th, 2013. So has the fund been varied in the past? We go, yes. So we put in our variation dates. So let's say it was again varied on the 1st of the 7th, 2017 so we're doing upgrade and you can continue to do that so i have seen up to like 10 of those so what we do is we put that in so they're the variation dates now what we need to do is just have a look through our deed to find the relevant clause that enables us to upgrade so let's say it's clause i think for clear dots it's about 180 141 i think or somewhere thereabouts um, now if you need to um, if you want, uh, for example, is the person a founder or principal or another person who needs to sign off? Uh, but if they don't, um, then we just go through this. Usually the trustee can amend the deed. So we've done that. Um, and then you can see the green line. It's all tickety-boo. So we're off and running. And then we just um, draft up that document there. Um, from Timothy Arbon, can you set default answers? Um, yeah, you'll find, um, Timothy, that's a really good question. Um, when we get round to, I'm not sure I'm going to have time, I'll, I'll see, 
But when we get, actually what I'll do after this, I'll do a, a auto reversionary pension where we do have default answers for it. So um, here's the document there. So I've got a um, uh, constitution upgrade and you can see how long, what did that take me, like five minutes? Um, so I've got a, a constitution upgrade. Um, and again, you guys have got a, you've got the unlimited credit. So basically you can go through and pull these documents whenever you want. So a special resolution by company members, which is required. Um, it's under section 136 of the Corpse Act. Uh, it's a unanimous resolution and then we sign off. And then we go down into, this is the new constitution there. Um, again, I would get uh, the clients in to sign this off mainly because we're looking at deeds and there's a, a lot of fancy stuff around that rather than digital signatures. Now, I won't go through that, uh, but, you know, there's a lot of swish stuff in there. Uh, for example, if there's a death benefit, only um, the replacement director, which is the executor, um, can deal with members' death benefits, etc., etc. Now, this is the SMSF trustee. This is our simple deed, not our um, leading member deed. Um, so, again, we've got a PDS there because this is a, a brand-new document. Um, and then we go into uh, the deed of variation. Um, and again, it's the so on and so forth, talks about all the stuff, um, and then all our deed. Uh, we've got a few uh, bits of training around uh, this, but again, it's very, very sophisticated. Like, for example, um, one of the ones that is like really relevant yesterday, and, and you'll get used to it when you're dealing with uh, families. Um, so you can see all the trustee stuff's there. Um, trustee meetings, uh, which we just had a look at. Um, so you can see here, um, I'll just blow it up for you a little bit, uh, members' individual sub-funds. So when you're bringing in younger members of the fund, you can actually create sub-funds for members under this rule. So that's uh, pretty sophisticated. And then you set up separate investment strategies, which you can uh, put in there as well. So that's all there. So that's essentially the... Um, the uh, if you want to look at upgrading over the next 30 days, some of your client funds, they've already got a company, then effectively you would use that. You can see then there's two documents provided in one. Um, if you were just simply looking at doing a, um, a simple, if I go back up there, um, if you're looking at a um, SMSF, if you're just looking at a normal um, deed upgrade, um, then you would be somewhere uh, leading member SMSF establishment, so I've just gone down. So there would be just a simple SMSF deed variation. So if there's no corporate trustee, effectively you just go through this process. Um, I'll talk about this um, while I'm here. So this is the one, this is like the SMSF offset agreement. We talked about this at class, remember, where uh, we've got a, again, I'll go into the Abbott family. Have it family. Uh, okay, just have to do a caps there. Uh, so I want to make sure it's in the same file. As I said, if it goes white, it doesn't see how it's just gone green. So that means I can start and it's going into that process. So this is actually going to be a loan. Um, do we load into DocuSign? Um, no, we're going into um, a hello sign. A hello sign is probably about three times bigger than DocuSign, and it's one that we've uh, chosen. Um, that is just sitting, waiting in the wings, and uh, when we integrate with class, uh, which will be in probably a couple of months, we'll bring out HelloSign for these. But wherever you see, Timothy, a deed, or you've got witnesses, you can't really digitally signature. Um, and when you get to a really long tail, for example, um, doing eight or nine documents together, there's a lot more value, because you can see how quickly this stuff is built, there's a lot more value to get the clients in and sign and say, look, this is what we're doing if you're looking at charging fees. If you're doing an investment strategy um, and you're giving it away, then absolutely uh, look at doing digital signing. But as I said before, we will be using Holo Sign, which is a, a lot better system, certainly not as expensive. So um, the, the, this is the um, where the SMSF is the lender. Um, so we've got a company again. So again, uh, once we um, have uh, class uh, integrated, you'll just be able to pull through here. But as I said, it's not not overly untoward uh, for this Smith Street, uh, Sydney. 
New South Wales, 2000. Um, so we'll use our two plus directors. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put three directors in. So what we've got here is uh, three members, three directors. So the first one is John Smith, who's the patriarch of the family, his wife, Judy Smith, and their son, Sam Smith. So Sam is 40 years of age, um, and then we've obviously got uh, John and Judy, who are just in the final process. Well, they're just getting retired now. So we've got the next one there. Um, so what we've got there is both John and Judy are in a pension, which I'll go through very shortly. So John and Judy are in a pension, and what they're going to do is they are now going to lend to Sam, their son's family trust. So it's going to be the Sam Smith Family Trust. Uh, the trustee is, um, I'll just put there as an individual, just to make show you what an individual looks like. So obviously it's not an SMSF. So we've got Sam, you can put middle names in, Smith. Uh, we then go to his address, so lives down the road from his parents, Smith, um, Sydney, Oops, sorry, Sydney. And we do have to fill in, if you find that you don't fill in all these details, it comes up as a blank box um, or a funny box of code in your document. But remember, you can go back and change. So we've got there, and you can do joint borrowers if you want. Um, so it's lending to, so the SMSF, so what we've got here is separate investment strategies. John and Judy's pension account is lending to um, a Sam's account. So what we've got there is we're going to have a term. Um, so we don't know the date of the agreement, so I'll leave that blank. Um, variable interest rate, date commencement of the loan. Um, so let's say that is the 1st of October. Um, the reason I do that is because we, uh, in order not to be an in-house asset, you can't lend to members, and that's all through the documentation, but you can lend to family companies and trusts, provide us no more than 5%. So you need to go through and have a look so the, where it's agreement. So we need to work out that if there's a million dollars there, then I would go $49,000 is the principal loan amount. Work out the term, five years. Uh, what's the commencement interest rate? Again, we're gonna to have to find out what an overdraft rate is or what a similar rate is commercially so that we don't breach the arm's length rules, but just simply go to your bank and find out that is. Interest payable uh, quarterly in arrears. Uh, now, this is a multi-document, so I would put in place a mortgage deed to show that um, effectively it is um, arm's length. So I'm going to go through again, start this on the 1st of October, charged over, um, you can do over property, Sam's property, but let's just say um, assets of the Sam Smith Family Trust. So we do a mortgage there, um, and again, you see it's gone green, so we just press that, and the document will be generated for that. Um, so we've got, we currently use Reckon Docs. Through this, we have the choice to either have an electronic copy or a hard copy to bind it. And I assume that all these documents are electronic, we print them out at our end, absolutely, if you want to do that. Yeah, it's up to you. Um, we have got uh, supplies for you, so we can, uh, send out supplies to you if you want uh, binders and folders, etc. We're just finding most of um, everyone, rather than spending forty or fifty dollars extra to print out, that they basically do it um, in house. Particularly if you need two or three copies. Um, but I'll, I'll hand it over to Michael in a second. He'll go through all the corporate stuff as well and share strategies. Um, we will have a printing. Uh, a little bit later on, but again, at the moment, we find that most of our people, particularly on limited, uh, they just want to simply uh, do it all themselves. So that's the loan agreement. So this is um, going from the family fund to their son, who is a member, remember? The son was a member and director of the family SMSF to the family trust. So we go through, there's a, a loan agreement there. There's the lender, uh, then the borrower, which is Sam John Smith as trustee for, if it was a company, it would have come up. The lender will lend monies. Uh, we go through all the terms and conditions of the loan agreement. Uh, may take a charge over the property listed in Schedule 1. Property includes cash, etc. assets. Then we go down here. We've got our signing page there. Now, as you can see, because it's um, just an individual, 
you will need to get uh, witnesses signatures there that's where it gets hard with digital and look there's a, a lot of lawyers you know I hate using digital so we've given you both options there so there's the three directors who sign off uh, and there's the um, terms of the loan agreement which I showed you before and then we go down into the mortgage deed um, and then that needs to be signed off as well. So my preference is obviously get them in there. But that's a great strategy for you. What, what would you charge for that strategy for a client? You know, if, they're, if their overdraft is or their loan facility is going to be 50 grand, and remember that's a credit line over a period of time, you're just going to have to monitor that 5%, then what I would suggest for you is to um, ensure that um, effectively uh, you would... Um, just monitor that 5% rule over a period of time. But I would say that's worth, you know, $50,000. That's at least two two dollars to prepare all of that. And again, it's not a financial product whatsoever. So if we then um, move from there, are you there, there Michael? I am, Grant. Um, what I'll do is, um, are you logged in or do you want me to? I am now I'm logged in, so. I'll just can... stop sharing if you want to share your screen. Yep. And just take people through the company stuff. So as, uh, thank you, Grant. As Grant uh, mentioned before, um, we have uh, the, we can find the documents either via product categories or through the search engine. So I tend to like the search engine now. Um, so if I look through for a company, we've got three different types of companies other than the variations that we provide currently. So we've got our standard company, uh, our SMSF special purpose trustee company, and a leading member company, which Grant just uh, mentioned um, earlier, which will be covered off in our October road shows. So I'll just run through uh, now the special purpose trustee company and the process. So as Grant was talking about before we've um, in relation to electronic signing, we do have within our FAQs here, uh, which you can look down for each document and whether or not our recommendation via external legal advice is that the document cannot cannot be currently signed. So um, I answered a quick Q&A just before in relation to that and Grant uh, spoke through it. Um, there's uh, a few things such as companies which we're covering off now which are not covered under the legislation such as the Corporations Act and there's no reference currently back to the Electronic Authority Act. So there is debate still on whether such documents as a company constitution can or cannot be electronically signed. Our, our recommendation at the moment until uh, uh, there is precedence in relation to that uh, is not to electronically sign constitutions. But um, So I'll go in and start the engine. I'll, um, so the, the first section we've got is the company name availability, which just uh, has an API or a handshake into ASIC and checks whether that name is available. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, put, um, I'll put one that is my own company. It'll come up saying that it's not, but I'll, I'll just push it through. So if I go look up, it'll say it's currently not available. I'll say, do I own the business name? I'm going to tick yes, and we'll continue. I'll put it into my, fold, my own folder that I've got in the vault. And it'll come up asking in relation to um, the ASIC fee or not. So um, I won't actually, actually, Grant, you might have to go through that because I don't, uh, I'll have to, because it's under my login, I'll have to um, accept and pay that ASIC fee. Um, I, well, I think we, um, I think from that, most people would understand. Um, the actual interview, yeah. I, I, I guess the, bit, the thing I'll point out and, uh, as we go through our interview process on the special purpose and everything, we only have, so the, only, only the questions that are required for a special purpose trustee company come up. We only have one type of share class contained within our constitution, which is a non-dividend uh, paying uh, share. So um, we don't have ordinary shares, we don't have A class or B class because trustee, SMSF trustee company only requires the one type of share class. Um, and so you can only select that. Um, so you go through, obviously put the office holders, select the members, they'll select the uh, type of share, which would be non, it automatically comes up and you complete. And um, you can either save your responses if you want to come back to it later, or once you, just with the companies, so the standard companies or the special purpose ones, once you save, but once you press finish, um, it actually will create the, a the API that goes through to ASIC and um, 
gets the ACN. So it's just on the companies. They're the only ones you can't, once you've pressed finish, you can't actually go back and amend um, or relaunch the interviews to amend any of the questions. All of, all of our other documents you can. So, so for the, just want to go through for the standard company, the different uh, classes of shares? I can. So I go, so I, I, on the standard company, we've got, um, I'll just pull it up. So we've got ordinary shares, we've got A class shares, B class shares, C and D and redeemable preference shares. Um, each of those have uh, different, uh, obviously, whether they're dividend, non-dividend, um, uh, whether they uh, have um, voting rights or non-voting rights. Um, and uh, as you go through and set up the companies, the, each company it actually comes up and goes through each of our share classes. So and we'll provide uh, the details of each of those classes. And while you're there, obviously you're a bit of a tax guru and all that sort of stuff. Do you just want to go, I know Stephen was looking uh, for Div 7A. Can you just go through how to do, div, just want to do Div 7A for us? Div 7A, yeah, I can do that. Yep. So same thing again. Now, importantly, while, while everyone's there, um, if you're doing a, an, um, a related party loan from a bucket company, which I, I love doing, to uh, an SMSF, um, that's also a Div 7A loan, um, potentially, and uh, well, it's Div 7A loan, but the terms of the LRBA or the Commissioner's Guidelines for Nali override um, Div 7A. So um, those terms apply. So the Div 7A uh, interview process is uh, quite uh, efficient again. Um, we, we jump in there. So it comes through saying, first question is um, we go through the lender and then the borrower and the details of the agreement, so the loan details. So um, in this case, I'll say the lender will be a company. Uh, I'll put one of my own companies in that I have. Um, and you'll notice here in brackets, we've got a note that says it includes P2Y LTD. So you do not, do not need to include those. They'll come through on the document. If you put them again, you'll have, uh, it'll come through on the document saying P2Y LTD twice. So um, just to put those off. I'll just put a um, break one in there. I'll put my normal address. And we'll just say one director and I'll just put myself. As we go through, so now we'll come up to who the actual borrower is. So um, we'll say that the borrower is myself. I had a loan from my company myself throughout the year. Uh, we can select the address here. I don't have to refill it again. Um, come through and just to make it a bit quicker. And now, D, this is where we get into the full details of the actual uh, Div 7A agreement. So um, if you don't know the date, uh, you can leave it blank and it can be put on the document uh, once it's completed. Um, but for my purposes, I'll put that the agreement's being done today and that it is going to be executed in Queensland and that commencement of the loan I'll use today as well ease of purposes and we'll say the loan amount if I've borrowed from my or taken funds from my company throughout the year um, and because I'm, put, I'm putting in the Div 7A agreement so it's not deemed to be a dividend by the ATO I'll put in uh, some of half a million dollars and then depending on whether the loan's going to be um, secured or unsecured um, we'll select out the required term. If it's an unsecured loan, we can only have seven years. If it's secured by property um, or other, then it can be 25 years. So I'm going to put this in as an unsecured loan. Uh, we've got the uh, default rates of uh, interest that will come up through there. And in effect, that's the agreement completed. And then if it's secure, then a mortgage deed comes up. Um, there was a question just while we're on uh, companies is, does their documentation have the ability to put successor directors in it? It does. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So that's how to do your, your Div 7A agreement. Let's just have a look at it. So we'll download it. Yeah, as Grant mentioned then, um, so if, if we're going to secure it via property, then a mortgage deed comes through as well for, with the document. But because uh, I've gone unsecured, it won't do so. 
Here's our dip 7A. So we've come up with the, uh, between the lender being my company, Cheek Investments, myself borrowing the funds, uh, goes through the details of the loans, um, meaning of the loan under dip 7A, all references back to the current requirements. Yeah, that's, a, that's actual commissioner's guidelines on dip 7A. We use as a guideline there for the clients so they know exactly what's going on. Correct. And um, it goes further into that in relation to um, the minimum interest rate, the maximum term, um, given that I've selected uh, unsecured mines seven years. Uh, Mention talks up here, as we talked before, about uh, mortgage over real property. If I've gone 25 years, then we would have had the mortgage deeds come through. Uh, refinancing of the loan, amalgamated loans, the minimum yearly repayment required, which calculates out, and the actual loan agreement here. So we've got uh, coming through here, so you've got uh, the interest rates, um, borrowers details, repayment terms, and the details and a schedule of the with the terms of the loan agreement of when it was taken out and the uh, period to be repaid. So we just left it flexible there that you could use it for 2018-19 and also 2019-2020. So if you can uh, just jump out of there, Michael, and I'll just go for the last one. As you can see, we can, um, uh, we can actually go through quite a, a lot here. I just want to take you through um, as a final one. Um, someone asked before what happens if you've got pre-fills. So we are going down this track, and you're going to find um, this will be the case when we um, have a look. You can see all the account-based pensions what we've got here. Rollbacks. So I just pick the account based pension, start the document. Um, and all of these, um, again, um, once we get to the pre fills, you're actually going to find um, that will be very, very popular um, in terms of the estate planning. So make sure that you do get um, up and uh, register for that estate planning. We'll send you a link through. But as light, your doc users, it's only $145. So we go into the, uh, this is a bit more. Well, not really more complicated, um, but it does have a nice uh, lot of stuff here uh, built in. Um, under the deed, what was the full name of the member? So we'll just put John Smith. Now we need to put his, uh, when's it making the application? I'll just leave that date. Uh, the member birthday, um, so 01, um, 09, 19, uh, 54. So that will then pop up the age of the member being 65. Um, so what's the commencement date? Um, let's say that it is uh, the next week's date. Uh, the proposed account-based pension balance. So let's say it's uh, $500,000. Now we might have different pensions. Um, it comes up with the annual payment as uh, declared. So we might go up with 40,000. Oh, I'm sorry, what am I doing? 40,000. Now, I just want you to look at this. So, proposed account based pension balance, the minimum is 19. Remind me, remember this, but we've chosen $40,000. This is absolutely crucial. Now, with this pension, it might be, for example, heavy on the tax free component. Um, and so, that gives me a tax wall. So, that's, that's my starting pension. So, I then go to the next one, and this is uh, obviously the trustee. Um, so I'll just go through again. So as you can see, it's going to be so much easier when we integrate with class. Smith nominees, oh, one, two, three, four, five. Um, go through the process again. Uh, five Smith Street. Oops. Sydney, New South Wales, two, oh, oh. Um, I will use um, two plus directors, put in two, um, and then I confirm with that. That comes up with my two, uh, John Smith. So what I'm doing is I'm building the trustee form for which, them, for which they are going to sign. So the next one is where it all starts to happen. So I've got the director signing on behalf. Okay, so in the event, do you want to nominate a reversion beneficiary? Yes. So let's say we've got 
Judy Smith. So remember, this is John's. So terms, conditions. So in the event um, that we've got, um, so see how Judy Smith, I click that button. So this is the suggested wording. Um, in the event that Judy Smith remains alive, in the event that Judy Smith remains alive at the time of my death, they would take 100% of my pension in any manner or form they desire. In the event that she's not alive, uh, my superannuation state to go proportionally to each of my bloodline children remain alive at the time of my death. Any of the child is under age 25 is to be paid a non-commutal pension at age 25 with a drawdown. Now you can sit down and, and change those. And again, we'll be looking at this uh, a lot when it comes around to the um, or when it comes around to uh, the roadshow, all of these sort of things. So I'll be spending a bit of time there. Um, in the event that neither Judy Smith nor my bloodline children remain alive at the time of death, my super benefits are to pass to my estate. So then um, I've got the trustee meeting. Um, so we'll do that. It was on the 20th. Um, John and Judy, selectors, we said because we've already got that data in there. Press that and then bingo is green. And that means we're off and running. And it's processed and it goes into the vault. Okay, so um, our team says that um, all your logins have been created. Um, and you'll receive an email within the next hour with your $2,000 credit. So let's just go through here. There's a couple of little tweaks I want to show you. This is why, well, when we build our documents, we build them for a whole lot of strategy purposes. So there's a, because it's a, a pension, it's a product disclosure statement, which is quite extensive. Um, have a read through that, but we have to put that in. Now we get to the document. So the first thing is an application by John Smith to commence an account-based pension. Uh, just while I'm here anyway, um, a couple of questions came up. Um, when you s establish an SMSF with us, there are no member application forms because what we do is if when you put the initial members of the fund, uh, it's all embedded into the document itself and the initial members sign off. So it's a lot stronger version of um, than an application form. Uh, plus it also means you don't have to uh, carry all the crap around. So there's a family, 65. The member hereby requests the trustee to commence. Um, they've got a condition of release, $500,000. Condition of release is retirement. Uh, minimum annual is 18, current. Um, now, we've then got the reversion in the event that Judy Smith remains alive at the time, blah, 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 condition two, and then also condition three. So that all goes there. Signed and it's witnessed. So because we want to actually get two witnesses, so it is very much like a binding death benefits direction. Um, remember, in our deed, this always, well, I don't understand how anyone can have a BDBN that overrides a, a, a pension. Otherwise, you need to have that disclosure in there. Um, you'd have huge problems with Corporations Act law anyway. Anyway, so binding trustee resolution. So this always has precedence. Now, um, we've got all those conditions um, essentially um, coming down uh, from that perspective. Um, and then what we can do... Um, which I will be building a little bit later on, is that um, we've got our minimum payments um, that you will be able to tick a box um, that you can see here the minimum payments, 19, 460, but we're taking out 40. We can tick a box such that that additional 21000 or $20,640 would be treated as a commutation payment. So the client still gets tax-free $40,000, but there's a minimum of 19,000, but that $20,640 as a commutation actually gets a debit to the T-bar, which means if they've got additional contributions going in, they can use that for further pension purposes. So it's again, just a little bit of um, smart um, stuff to come up. Anyway, we've gone about five minutes over time. I'm sorry about that. I mean, really, I could go through so much there for you. Um, have a look around. As I said, you'll find in that support centre, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, look, one of my favourite ones is obviously in the strategy automation is the LRBA for shares. It's an instalment warrant. You know, that does 10 documents and only takes like five minutes to do. But again, we're here to support you over that period of time. Please feel free to uh, contact us. Um, and uh, does the free trial period of 30 days commence upon receipt of email? Uh, no, it's actually when you receive the email because we need to do every one at once. So start getting those documents, do that investment strategy um, for your clients and start building as we see. 
Um, and the last one that, look, as I said before, ultimately at the end, you know, we're hopefully that you're encouraged to stay with us, either because we've got the lowest price stocks. Um, more importantly, uh, for those of you who, the, the beauty about the unlimited is that you can do more docs than you normally would do. do. You can see it's very quick, um, it's very efficient. Um, we do do annual upgrades for SMSFs, uh, but essentially it means if you've got, you know, if you've got 50 to 100 or so SMSFs, um, plus you've got an accounting practice, you'd be crazy not to go down that 595. If you want CPD and tech support, 795, or the smarter move is to get a license. But let's let's just get you comfortable with where you're going. Um, and what we'll do is, um, uh, so uh, does the documentation allow for appointing successor director? Yes, Timothy does. Um, let's get you comfortable with that. Start playing around. Um, I'll send you this uh, this uh, very shortly uh, with that uh, email in an hour, so you can have a look. But anyway, thank you very much for attending. I know you're very busy people, uh, but again, um, you know we want to get you in the family and you know, make sure that we all move forward. Oh, and just one other thing, please, um, uh, as we go down the, the track, uh, what I would suggest is that, um, let's just go up here, I think I've got it. Um, have a look at the road show. Um, we've got here, which is in October. I just wanna show you what to do. Um, so let's say that you're going to Adelaide Road Show. Um, that pops up here. So then we wanna book tickets. So what will happen here is um, effectively we look at booking um, the ticket there. You will, because you're users, it's normally 2 to 45, early bird 195. You're getting the first release. You would book simply one ticket there under the 145 because you are now a Lightyear Docs user. But come along to that. I think, I think once you do that, it's actually going to blow your mind. I've got 20 strategies over that day. So it's going to be an extremely exciting day. Anyway, thank you very much for that. Um, we will uh, be in touch and again, feel free to contact us on 1300 168 or Michael at I Love SMSF if it's a company query. If it's a technical stuff, please feel free to call me, grant at ilovesmsf.com. We are there to support you every bit of the way. Anyway, it's Grant Abbott and Michael signing off.